<laughs> Hello and welcome back to Charin's Pete Huxley. Um, he is being very boisterous because he wants to go on a walk, so I'm going to try and keep him calm in my arms for a little bit. Uh, this is my March review video. Um, I've been ill for last week and oh my gosh, hay fever is the worst thing ever, so I'm very puffy eyed. Um, but so I wanted to make a video about the books that I read in March, which is three books. Didn't have a particularly successful March, um, but it's okay. <laughs> The first book I have to talk to you about is The Master Margarita by <laughs> Mikhail Bulgakov. This was written under Stalinism in the 30s um, in Russia, so it wasn't published until the late 60s. And this copy was translated by Michael Glenny. This is the such a strange book, one of the strangest books I've ever read. Extremely surrealist, magical realism, historical fiction. It takes place within um, the literary society of Moscow, when one day um, the devil appears along with his companions, which include a human sized cat, um, which talks and there are witches and there are seances. There's lots of macabre stuff. But there's also like a retelling of the crucifixion. It is very unexpected and very crazy. This was the pick for our book club um, in March and <laughs> none of us, I read it, but the other two didn't get past like 50 pages. And I actually got to 102 pages before I traded it in for the audiobook instead so I could at least finish the thing. All right, Huxley, you're going on the floor because you're being too annoying. We've read Russian authors in our book club before and we do like a denser read, but for some reason, like just none of us could connect with it at all. Maybe it's because we weren't actually emotionally prepared for a book like this. I know that my book club companions aren't big fans of magical realism. Even though the prose was interesting and like page to page was fine, I just had no motivation to read it at all. This is a book I've been wanting to read, not like really wanting to read, but this is a book I've been wanting to read for a few years. Um, and I think it was me and not it. I think I just came to it at slightly the wrong time, wrong expectations. Uh, but if you're into witches and the macabre and the devil, like, <laughs> this, this one's for you. The next book I have to talk about is The End of Men by Christina Sweeney Baird. Um, this was sent to me by HarperCollins. Usually I don't go for galleys, but um, they sent me an email saying they really liked my review of The Power by Naomi Alderman. And would I be interested in reading this? They sent me the blurb and I was like, yes, 100%, send that my way. <laughs> this comes out on the 29th of April. Um, if you are interested and want to pre-order it. It is about uh, a pandemic, woo, pandemic fiction, still really into that train, um, but it's a pandemic that only affects men. It's really fast moving, there are no treatments. Um, about 10% of men are immune to it, but basically all of the rest of men in the entire world die, like, eventually. <laughs> the book starts with a woman called Amanda, who is a doctor in a hospital in Glasgow where she connects a couple recent deaths in her hospital to the, the same set of symptoms and like starts screaming about the fact that this is this is traveling really quickly and is transmitted through women so <laughs> basically impossible to keep a lid on unless you immediately lock down everywhere. It has a slew of narrators and takes place over the course of about four years so from the very start um, when the breakout was happening to uh, searching for a vaccine and discovering a vaccine and then like how do we repopulate all of these men and how does this change the social dynamics for like for example gay men suddenly a very very small percentage of people and therefore it's way harder for them to find love but there are also loads of women reevaluating um, their sexuality and how they're willing to couple um, so they're not alone. It goes through a lot of things and overall I really enjoyed it. It felt very heightened <laughs> like every time I was reading it I like felt I really felt like I was in that world and then I would look up and be like it's okay our pandemic is, is chill um, in comparison and there were some points where I like absolutely sobbed like I I don't think I've cried this much in a book in ages because you get these situations where a woman's husband died and they're looking after their only son and they have to try and protect them or um, like men are voluntarily leaving their families or secluding themselves to try and stave off catching the disease. Yeah, there were some moments that pulled on my heartstrings and turned me into a sobbing mess and I really, really liked it. A couple of things I didn't like so much. Um, one, I felt like there were 
so many voices, it was really hard to sort of root for every single one. And you would have particular people whose storylines you cared about, but they wouldn't then show up for 100 pages, which is a classic issue with multi-narrated novels. I also felt that the voices of each of the um, narrators weren't distinct enough, especially when they were um, I, like a lot older or from a different race or different nationality. I felt like they all had very similar ways of communicating through text, which um, I didn't find very realistic and slightly like pulled me back into being like, okay, I'm reading a book rather than like, I'm in this world. But overall, I really liked it. Um, and I can see the comparison to The Power by Naomi Alderman, red cover. Um, but I think The Power is a lot more about the sort of like concept of that power shift. And this is a lot more about the, the, this, the individual human consequences of, of a pandemic. Um, it's not actually very overtly feminist. Like it's not talking about like women are taking over the world. I mean, it does, it does definitely, obviously that has to happen. Um, but I think it was more like just coming from the voice of womanhood than being um, like a feminist critique. As with all the other pandemic books I recommended recently, if you feel safe enough to delve into a world like this, I'd really recommend it, but also not everyone's cup of tea at the moment and that's completely fair. The final book I have to talk about is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. This came out in 2019 um, and it is about a boy called Little Dog in Hartford, Connecticut. His mother and his grandma fled from Vietnam uh, to the US during the war. Um, so it's about his relationships with his, his family, especially his mother, and also his relationship with his first boyfriend, Trevor. This was a very raw, poignant coming of age read. And it touched on so many topics, um, racism, migration, generational relationships, uh, drugs, coming to terms with your sexuality and being truly vulnerable in that. This wasn't like a light read, um, but it was so dreamy. It did sort of feel like I was floating whenever I was reading it, uh, which was quite pleasant, but I didn't feel like I was ever truly absorbed in it. I've read some reviews for it being like, I absolutely shattered my heart, like completely wrenching, can't get over it. And I can see why, because there were some elements that are really touching about it, but I don't think I ever properly related to it um, or felt in the story. And I think part of that is because of the prose. I think the language is too poetic for my taste, like that I had a lot of eye rolls. Um, I will read out an example. It is no accident, Ma, that the comma resembles a fetus, that curve of continuation. We were all once inside our mothers saying with our entire curved and silent selves, more, 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 I want to insist that our being alive is beautiful enough to be worthy of replication. And so what? So what if all I ever made of my life was more of it? That was a random paragraph I picked out. Is it no accident that a comma resembles a fetus? Because it they both deal with the themes of continuation and growth? Who's to say? Um, but there are just lots of extended metaphors, which I can imagine me, like as a 16 year old reading, it would be like, yeah. But me now, I'm just a bit too cynical and dry to be absorbed by that kind of wording. But if that sort of languorous writing um, really absorbs you, then um, I think you'd like this a lot. So those were all the books I read in March. Oh, I'm also continuing to read through the Harry Potter audiobooks, listen to the Harry Potter audiobooks. I'm like halfway through the last one now and there's nothing really more to say about that. It <laughs> just means that Technically, my Goodreads totals for this month aren't gonna be three, and that's what counts. Did you read anything in March that you particularly enjoyed and would like to recommend or chat about? Um, leave a comment down below, and I will see you in the next video. It's a special one, it's a special video. It'll be up within a couple of days of this one, so you won't have to wait a whole month for it. Okay, see you soon, bye.